Hello, and welcome to County Update. Today we'll take you to the home of a longtime county resident who is receiving some much needed home repair help from the county, the state, local businesses, and nonprofit organizations. County Environmental Protection will show us how low impact development practices can help us keep our waterways cleaner and healthier. We will remember the life and work of local award winning nature photographer and cinematographer Wes Skiles. We'll go to the 12th annual Breakfast on the Plaza and Service Fair for the homeless. And we will visit Poe Springs Park in High Springs, one of the true gems of the county's park system. Getting a codes violation citation from county codes enforcement isn't usually a good thing, but for one local widow, it was a violation citation which helped bring the community together to help her in her time of need. Yes, it's been a while. Effie Theus has lived in this modest Northeast Gainesville home since 1961. It's where she and her late husband raised a family. It's her granddaughter Taylor's home away from home, and it's where she wants to stay. All of my children have been born and me living here. But all that was in jeopardy when County Codes Enforcement found a list of codes violations and other problems making the home unsafe to live in. I came here, I visited the property, and then we found that they are living in a very unhealthy situation and, uh, and also a uh, dangerous situation also because there were some, uh, there are, uh, water was leaking in the, in the uh, roof and a uh, septic tank was overflowing. Uh, there are problems with the foundations and all those things. All problems which Mrs. Theus cannot begin to afford to pay the fines on, let alone repair. That's when the county housing office and codes enforcement switched from enforcement to assistance. Using $37,000 in Florida SHIP or State Housing Initiative Partnership Program funds. I wouldn't have had the money to have it done myself if it hadn't have been for the SHIP program. The next step was to partner with local builders and civic groups. We contacted the Habitat, uh, Alatua Habitat for Humanity. And then we, we made partnership with our, uh, with our code enforcement department also. So that, uh, and then code enforcement department, they voluntarily, they have um, just withdraw the uh, penalties and fines. It's more than $600. And more than just codes enforcement and Habitat for Humanity are taking part. A lot of communities is involved in this. As far as SHIP, we have Youth Build who's here today with us, and then we'll have the University of Florida Habitat Club will be in it. Um, we'll have Knights of Columbus from St. Augusta Church should be involved in it. Some of the subcontractors we have on um, Perry Roof and is helping us out on the roof as much as they can on this. And we have a lot of other subs that have helped us out discounting it for us to help use the money that we got. YouthBuild is using the opportunity to provide Santa Fe College students with some valuable workforce experience. Right now the students are working on the deck for the entrance of the house so that it goes over, over the strain field. But we'll be also taking down a building over, or a part of the structure on, over here on the left side of the house, helping replace the roof, um, maybe replacing some of the siding. And the job is also providing the participants something more, a sense of community and pride. We are public, uh, public servant actually, so we always need to uh, work and serve our public. So we are, really, uh, uh, we are really proud about this. It's very satisfying. It's satisfying to the students as well because they get to step back and say, and take a look at the work because there's a nice finished product at the end that they can see, that it's tangible, that they've taken part in, you know, and, and so there is that satisfaction of, hey, I've, I helped build this and, and help this, this family or this person get into their home. For which Mrs. Theus and her granddaughter are very grateful. We'll have central air and heat and a new porch so we can sit down and eat and drink sodas and play fun games. Oh, I'm happy about it. it I, I can't believe that 
I mean, nothing like this has ever happened to me. I sure appreciate what they're doing, though. I appreciate it very much. For County Update, I'm Alan Yetter. Wes Skiles was an explorer, conservationist, and an award-winning photographer and filmmaker. He was also a resident of Alachua County when he wasn't working on projects that took him all around the globe. Skiles died in a tragic diving accident in South Florida this past summer. To honor his memory, we bring you the following encore presentation of Wild Alachua, shot by and featuring Wes Skiles. From the first Spanish explorers to the exploration of outer space, Florida has played a key role in understanding natural history, uh, cultural history, and exploration. The Florida Museum of Natural History has one of the great traditions in vertebrate paleontology. In the area, we have many rich sites where students and volunteers and visitors can work with us in paleontological excavations. And this is a whale vertebra from Devil's Ear, a deep cavern way back in the Santa Fe River. And the museum is going to excavate more of this. So far, we just have one vertebra of this very large whale. But we need to go back in this deep underwater cavern with Wes Skiles to get the rest of it where he first discovered it back in the 70s. From here, we can go up the Santa Fe River. I can show you some of the most beautiful fossil country in the world. People who have very little background can easily explore, especially in some of our beautiful, pristine river systems. It's a perfect day for it. Let's go. We have some of the richest natural history sites, uh, paleontological sites. We have underground water systems and many different landscapes. We have a wealth of fossil sites in the Santa Fe River where people every year make new discoveries of extraordinary importance. So for the explorer, this area holds untold promise of, of discoveries that people can't even imagine. You know, one of the really amazing things about underwater cave exploration is you just simply never know what you're gonna find. Uh, in the 70s, we were diving through a very sinuous labyrinth of tunnels in the Devil's Ear cave system. And we came into a room. Here I saw this black shapes, these black circular objects sticking literally out of the wall. And I said, what on earth is that? Well, this is, um, this is what we saw at first. You know, we were swimming into the passageway and I looked and saw this bizarre pattern that was very un-limestone like and we knew it was time to bring it to you guys and you know well, find you did out. the right thing <laughs> and of course this is like one vertebra out of i suppose 70 or so that would make it a 60 foot archaeocete whale wes tell me what we're going to see today on our dive well we're going to go on an introductory cave dive a trip into the daylight zone of an underwater cave, which is called a cavern. And this is a place where y'all can relax and enjoy that world without going where you need special training and equipment. You guys ready to go on a cavern dive? Yeah. All ready. Y'all ready? Oh, nice. Nothing can quite prepare you for the experience of diving in these magical pools of light. And what looks like just a little shallow pond from the surface um, just opens up and reveals itself to be this magical, deep, complex place underneath the surface. Springs offer a real myriad experience for, for snorkelers, for scuba divers, for cave divers. It doesn't matter what your level of experience is, you can enjoy these places. And the discoveries and, and the connection we make with our past by, by exploring that with the museum is, is something that's extremely enriching. Beginning here at the Florida Museum of Natural History, they can get a broad orientation to many of the fundamental aspects that color everything you see in Florida. Exploration on Earth is pretty much done in the sense that we've seen 
almost every corner of the planet, but there does remain one area of the planet unexplored, and that's the deep underwater cave systems. And here in North Florida, we have one of the largest labyrinth of unexplored cave systems on Earth. You know, we've explored hundreds of miles underwater, underground, and we haven't even gotten to the tip of the iceberg. We can all help preserve our water quality and resources by incorporating LID techniques in local residential and commercial development. LID stands for Low Impact Development, and as County Environmental Protection's Stacy Greco is about to show us, the techniques are making a difference in Alachua County. Jonesville at Northwest 140th Terrace with Mark Clark, IFAS Extension Specialist, looking at an innovative median. What's different about this median? Well, we hope to see a lot more of these types of medians, and one of the aspects of managing stormwater as a result of development is to deal with the increased runoff. And typically, or the traditional way of dealing with that runoff would be to send it to the curb, run it down the curb into a storm drain, and then that storm drain goes underground to some sort of stormwater basin that might be quite a ways away from the actual source of that runoff. Well, these medians typically are built up and no water moves into them. This particular medium is actually down below the pavement surface. So instead of water going directly to the stormwater basin, first it comes into here, and a large percentage of that water can actually infiltrate right here, right near the point of impervious. So this is much more um, like the natural way the water would have found its way into the soil to support that surficial groundwater. And in the meantime, you're actually trapping some of the contaminants as well. The soil is acting, acting as a filter, as well as some of the organic material that's put into this basin, as well as the plant material. What type of contaminants are we talking about? Well, mostly when we're talking about road surfaces, it's usually particulate matter associated with sand and silt. If you've got a leaky oil pan, it might be some hydrocarbons, oil and things like that. Plus there's atmospheric deposition. There's a certain amount of nutrients and things uh, from the atmosphere, and there's also some heavy metals. Now, if there's runoff from landscaping areas, we could also have fertilizers and nutrients. Okay, so all of those pollutants get trapped here. What happens if this gets really full? Well, there's two ways the water can come out. In this particular basin, there's actually an overflow storm drain, which you see here in the middle. So once the water level comes up in here to a certain point, it'll actually enter the storm drain and then still run to that stormwater basin, that more conventional design. But for the smaller storms, all of that water gets captured right here and is allowed to infiltrate. Again, trying to mimic that pre-development condition much better. Okay, so the water goes down that if it gets filled up in here and then goes to a traditional basin. Right, you can see it's only about maybe six inches above. In fact, you know, one of the, the ways to increase the storage here would be to raise that up a little higher, get a little more additional storage in here before that water pops off and goes into that traditional basin. This is attractive too. I know some of the medians with the grass on it are really hard to mow and all those clippings go in the roadways and they have a hard time managing that because that's pollution too. Right. And these plants will be aesthetically pleasing um, and they're also providing a function in here. They're actually helping to treat the water. They're taking up nutrients, they're providing some organic matter. That organic matter finds its way into the soil. The microbes, the bacteria, which a lot of times we think of as we don't like, but they're actually doing a lot of work for us. They're actually helping to treat some of those pollutants. And so doing this, treating the stormwater in this local basin, this is called low impact development? This is one of many, many practices associated with low impact development. And um, what you're trying to do is create a treatment train. So as water is moving from a, a, a source of contamination or runoff, you're trying to put all sorts of things in, in the way of its path to treat the water, to allow the water to infiltrate before it actually makes it to that more traditional basin. Okay, great. Well, thanks for coming out and talking with us today. Oh, you're welcome. If you'd like to learn more about stormwater and low impact development techniques such as rain gardens and rain barrels, please visit the website on your screen. Now let's take a look at the news from around the county. 
The City of Gainesville, Alachua County Office on Homelessness and the Alachua County Coalition for the Homeless and Hungry recently held its 12th annual service fair and breakfast on the plaza in downtown Gainesville. The event brought together local leaders and advocates for the homeless to help draw attention to the problem and to help homeless citizens receive services and assistance. The purpose of the breakfast on the plaza basically is to bring to our homeless population those services that they depend on and that they use to ensure that one that they're informed of who the service providers are and to try and connect them to those service providers. Service providers that include the Department of Children and Families that may help them with food stamp assistance and things of that nature. And the county is also cooperating with the federal government to help formulate new services. Alachua County is now being used as a pilot county by the U.S. Department of Agriculture to see if we could fact put together a program that would allow homeless persons in our community to use their food stamp card or EBT card to receive hot meals at participating restaurants that are approved by the Department of Children and Families. Uh, we're the only community in the state and in the southeastern region that has this pilot program. Currently, Satchel's Pizza, Junior's Restaurant, and four Domino's Pizza locations are participating. The county and the city of Gainesville are still working to open a one-stop homeless services center in Gainesville next year. County Commissioner Rodney J. Long says the face of local homelessness has changed. You're talking about a population that could actually be anyone in our community. Uh, homeless, uh, homelessness is not always uh, determined by people who want to be homeless, which is considered to be the chronically homeless, but there are people who just find themselves in unfortunate situations. And during tough economic times, community events like the Breakfast on the Plaza can be especially important. We need to work as a community. Uh, we need to remember that investment in people and in community services um, benefits the whole community. Florida ranks third in the nation in number of AIDS cases. To combat the deadly disease, the Regional Minority AIDS Program at the Alachua County Health Department is participating in the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Business Response to AIDS Program by implementing the Stopping AIDS is Everyone's Business campaign. The local campaign is reaching out to the community through education and AIDS HIV testing at local businesses. We have a dressing room where we usually have our entertainers work and we didn't do anything on a Monday night, so they approached us if we, we would let them do testing in there. And uh, so we started about a year ago, and I think we've uh, tested about 600 people this year. The area program is also active throughout Putnam, Columbia, and Marion counties, and has recently been expanded throughout the state by Florida's Bureau of HIV AIDS. Currently, 31 businesses are participating in Alachua County. I got involved in a program about five years ago at this other barber shop, um, World Cuts, where I used to work at. Um, I met a young lady by the name of Ms. Benita Young, and she talked to me about the program. I thought it was real interesting for the young people. And presenting the information in a familiar setting like a store or a business can make education and prevention easier. Simple as putting an apron around your customer's neck, you know, gives them the ability of, you know, seeing that you're free to conversate about AIDS and HIV. One thing about a barbershop, the people are more comfortable. Gentlemen are more comfortable amongst their peers, so they talk more. And, you know, it's like, if one individual see you do something and they see it's like, it's okay, they run ahead and go and do it themselves. So that's why we figured out that the barbershop was the best place for testing because the amount of young people that within the volume that comes to the barbershop and the salon. If you or your business are interested in participating in the Stopping AIDS is Everyone's Business campaign, call 352-334-7900, extension 3335, or visit www.alatracountyhealth.org. Ground was officially broken recently on the Senior Recreation Facility of Alachua County. The $5 million facility is funded through county and city of Gainesville funds from the voter-approved Wild Spaces Public Places Initiative. On behalf of the Alachua County Board of Commissioners and staff, we are pleased to provide $1.5 million funding through the Wild, places, Wild Spaces Public Places Initiative. Thank you.
The project is also funded through a $2 million state grant. The 17,000-square-foot facility located on U.S. 441 near the Florida Highway Patrol Station is expected to be completed by next summer. Post Springs Park, located near High Springs, is one of our county's natural treasures, offering visitors 202 acres of scenic nature, walking trails, playgrounds, softball and volleyball facilities, and its own natural spring, gushing 42 million gallons of crystal clear water every day. If it sounds like Post Springs has something for just about everyone, that's because it does. Springs, a magnificent turquoise jewel that explodes with 45 million gallons of refreshing clear water a day, feeding the mighty Santa Fe River. Located in High Springs, Florida, close to I-75 in Gainesville, Ho Springs is a protected county park unlike any other in America. The shallow spring run weaves a silver thread through the woodland, caressing the roots of towering cypress and majestic pine trees. The enchanting echo of the barred owl's call sends white-tailed deer scampering over the grassy fields. Migratory birds rustle out of the trees and launch into flight. Visiting this spring, you see the purity of a pristine land before time. Nature Quest has a program called Weekend Adventures. This is where we take your group and bring it to Santa Fe River or Itchituttany for a fun adventure. What we do is serve you lunch after you've canoed and kayaked the Itchituttany or Santa Fe River. They're two of the most pristine rivers in North Florida. They're scenic and wild. So you're gonna see a lot of nature. You're gonna have a great lunch and really enjoy the day. We've got volleyball, we've got softball, We've got tetherball. We've got a full playground for the younger children as well. This is a great park for a great family. So we certainly want to invite you to participate in our weekend adventures with NatureQuest. Over tens of millions of years, Florida's low relief has alternately flooded and dried again and again. For a good portion of this land's geological past, the entire region was submerged when sea creatures died, their skeletal remains created a foundation that was compacted over a long period of time. As sea levels retreated, the limestone was exposed and became the substrate that defined the Florida Peninsula. The water that erupts from the spring begins its journey far outside the boundaries that we know as Poe Springs Park. Although a water molecule rarely stays in the atmosphere for more than 10 days, it can live underground, hidden in the dark labyrinths of rock for up to thousands of years. The permeable Florida limestone easily absorbs rainfall through cracks that extend deep below the surface. The water winds its way through a dark subterranean world of limestone cathedrals and corridors. Through these caverns and caves, water feeds the Floridan aquifer. This enormous underground reservoir is truly unique on planet Earth. There are few places that hold such an abundant resource of clean, clear drinking water. Within the aquifer, water flows along the gradient of the land, and when pressure is exerted on the system, it gushes up out of the ground in the form of a spring. Dozens of springs feed the Santa Fe River along its 75-mile path. Attracted by the bounty of clean, clear water, historians believe that people visited Poe Springs around 12,000 years ago. Distinctive stone and ivory spear points found in the river bear witness to the fact that early inhabitants hunted ancient animals like mammoth, mastodon, camel, horse, bison, and reptiles close to the springs. Many rituals transpired around these wellsprings of life. 
the Timucuan Indians celebrated victories, great hunts and harvests with an extraordinary reverence for water. Today, swimmers frolic in the clear water that gushes from the ground in the spring basin. Here, the turquoise spring water mixes with the bright orange and greens of the Santa Fe River, creating a unique kaleidoscope of color. Beyond the spring, many visitors are drawn to the 202-acre park to walk the quiet trails and boardwalks. The park also features a playground, fishing docks, volleyball courts, ball diamonds, picnic shelters, and a stunningly beautiful scenic lodge. NatureQuest has a unique program called Build a Field Trip. This is where we go into the classrooms and bring the students out into the field. It's very interesting, it's a lot of fun, and it's very educational. We bring you to the springs, we bring you to nature's flora and fauna, and showcase some of the natural beauty that we have here in North Florida. as you stride through the trails. Experience the river. Watch the tiny minnows swim at your feet. See a Sewanee cooter slip off a log into the water. Marvel at the birds soaring in the sky. And as the warm sun touches your skin, the beauty of this special place will endure in your soul. That's all the time we have for County Update. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.